Okay, this is uh, continuing or revisiting the uh, viewer questions that uh, people have left on different um, clips of mine now. The, the previous episode I flew off on a different tangent and actually uploaded the wrong video. Uh, so I'm having another, this is take two of answering viewer questions. Now I'll reread uh, this whole question again and you know with regards to that and now I'm not dismissing the, these questions because I do think that they're, they're valid questions and my concern is that that the the questions that are being asked are distracting from or changing the focus of what I'm saying and with regards to the uh, you know what is it a rights based approach that I'm positioning things with regards to the uh, the status of other animals now this question is it's uh, I'll answer one question in each clip because I don't want to fly off on different tangents to make this uh, too long so people are just going all the way through it uh, honest questions uh, do you really think that animals uh, do have an understanding of the concept concept of property. Do they care about being property, or are they interested in their needs? If you think that they are basically interested in their needs, the right not to be property is pointless and anthropomorphic. And if you do think they are basically only only interested in their needs, pet ownership isn't the problem in itself, because it's perfectly possible to provide a home that allows fulfilment of their needs better than nature. So we have two cases. The real a the real problem is the unnecessary breeding because it always want, produces unnecessary suffering and deaths, waste resources, etc. And B, rescuing can be ethically right because it reduces or avoids more suffering than not rescuing the animal. And then goes on to question two and three. So with regards to this one, now, I don't think it really matters whether the animals, when we're talking about cats and dogs and, and pigs and, and birds and fishes and, and things like that, it doesn't matter whether they have the concept of ownership or property or things like that. What matters is that how we are using them, so we are, as humans. So use an example. Let's say, uh, you know, go to a strip club and, you know, I talk about strip clubs a lot because I think that that is the, the probably the, the closest way that you can get to talking about exploitation of other animals in a way that most people will understand. Now, depending on your view, some people view the uh, entertainers or dancers as you know they are feminists because they're empower they're empowering themselves and they're getting people to hand over their money and 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 all this sort of stuff. And then from the other side of the coin is that these these are. Uh, strip clubs and these establishments are exploited because they're exploiting women and, and forcing women to uh, to objectify themselves and use viewing their body as property and something that, uh, you know, they should be rewarded with, with money and, and things like that. Now, okay, so let's say, for example, you've got the view that strip clubs are wrong so because they're exploitive to the females there and all that. So... It doesn't matter that the female, the female, the the entertainer on stage. Now I'm not sure. I'll have to look it up. Anyway, just with regards to the words that I was using, someone had a crack on me on Reddit, and I keep forgetting to to reread that every time I talk about this. Uh, okay, let's. The entertainer on stage doesn't view it as exploitive. They view it themselves as empowering and this and that. So, you know, what's the thing? The person on stage views it as views it as empowering for them you view it as exploitive what is it is it one or the other it can't be both it has to be one or the other you can't you know be exploiting someone and then have them viewing that exploitation as uh, empowering you can't empower someone and then have that empowerment being exploiting them by you know promoting their, their body and all that sort of stuff so this is what it comes down to is that how do we as humans and supposedly the uh, more intelligent species or superior species on this planet how do we view our use of other animals? Do we view our use of other animals as property? If it is yes, then the keeping of pets is fundamentally, ethically uh, problematic and wrong. So we shouldn't be doing that because we shouldn't be keeping animals as pets. We shouldn't be viewing them as objects. So that's going into that one. Now, um, you know, unnecessarily breeding. So this is, if, if we're breeding animals, then this is going back into the and I'm hoping those wind chimes aren't too noisy. Uh, this is going into the the view that... Actually, I'll just go and take them down for a minute. Hang on. 
Okay, getting a bit windy here in uh, Bris Vegas, so uh, took, just took the wind chimes down as much as I love the sound of them. It's probably not doing too good for uh, people listening. Now, going back to this is that uh, we're viewing the you know, the the breeding animals. We're viewing them as a as a commodity and as a resource because which is what's going to the thing. And it's bringing to the consumers' people because oh now everyone wants to to have a rescued animal. So this is the whole consumption we're continually consuming by the pushing the thing is oh you know rescued animals are the way to go. Don't buy from a pet shop. You know um, what's that? I can't remember what the slogan is now. No, it's the thing is that this is what we're doing. As soon as we're saying that the the our pet ownership is acceptable and it's condoned by animal rights activists and things like that is that we're furthering that industry. We're saying, yes, it's acceptable to own a pet if you brand that pet as a rescue. Francione has done that in his, uh, uh, what was it, um, ethical pet ownership or whatever it was, saying that it's um, you know, eth- ethically wrong and, and all that guffawful. Yet he classes the six dogs that he owns as refugees. So therefore, he's saying pet ownership is wrong though he's got his animals as refugees so he's saying that therefore it's right because he's branded these the ownership of this property as something different now this comes back to the whole other thing of um the, the strip club analogy as well it doesn't matter what you view a particular act as a particular thing or property um deed whatever as it's what society views it as as well because remember it's we're challenging societal norms so by having a rescued pet, we're saying, uh, we're saying, yes, it's all right to have a rescue. No, you can't buy that one from there. So why not? I can have the same animal if it came from a, fa- a pound or a rescue thing, though I can't go and buy the same animal from a pet shop. And I think I may have just said it, which is I'm having a crack at, at myself again. Uh, you know, And this is the thing is that when you, it goes back to the, the previous episode or future episode about language is that we've got to be so mindful all the time. Now, uh, so that's the thing is that you know I can grow, uh, you know, and I used the analogy in pre, in the previous clip as well. I can grow, you know, two thousand marijuana plants in my backyard or hundred, however big my backyard is, and say, no, I'm using it because I want the seeds for for whatever. I'm going to make paper out of it. I'm going to make rope out of it. It doesn't matter. The law said you can't do it without relevant permits, etc., etc. So, so this is the thing is where it gets problematic is that. Pet ownership is either good or bad. If it's bad, don't do any of it. If it's good, well then, hey, that's a completely different kettle of fish. A kettle of fish. This is a completely different ball game, and we've got to, uh, you know, make an effort to challenge that. And going back to the language thing, this is this is how hard it is. We've been, you know, I'm 40, 43, 43 now. You know, it, it's only been in the last probably three, four, maybe five years that I've actually started to, to think about the language that I use. And, you know, you've got 30-something years or, for, you know, 40-something years of, hey, this is the language that we use and this is all acceptable. So, you know, I'll admit, you know, I'm, I'm human. I do stuff up at, at times. So this is the thing I'm, I'm aware of when I say it. My trick is now is to uh, to not say it in future. So this going back to that, the, the whole language thing and, you know, if someone has the benefit of sitting down, looking at something while they're typing it out, then it's not acceptable for them to use its and dog. You know, things have gone to the dogs and and all that sort of stuff. So, anyway, the other questions are coming in future episodes. So please don't think that I've forgotten about it. Uh, thanks for watching. This was another episode of Vegan Police TV. Leave your comments down below. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. Subscribe wherever that button is. And remember, don't fear the vegan police. We're here to help.